Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture on previous GPAD questions on angina pectoris. I will explain the answers in detail. When you understand the subject, you don't need to remember the answers. So please pay attention. The first question which is given in GPAD 2019, which of the following is not a cardioselective beta blocker? Understand the question first. When you say beta blocker, you are talking about an agent which is in general blocking beta receptors. It includes both beta 1 and beta 2. In this beta 1 and beta 2, beta 1 present on heart which are known as cardioselective. Whereas beta 2 are present on bronchioles. So they are selective to respiratory system. So when you say cardioselective, you are particularly talking about beta 1 receptor. Now the question is which of the following is not a cardio selective beta blocker that means see you have two different kinds of beta blocker agents are there some of the agents will block both the receptor some more preferentially block beta 1 receptor the preferential beta 1 blockers are known as cardio selective now this says which one is not a cardio selective that means you need to figure out an agent which is blocking both the receptors now you have drugs like bisoprolol nevibolol acibutalol and pindolol out of the four, these three are cardioselective. That means they are selectively acting on beta 1. Understand this, it is not absolute selectivity. More preferentially, they will, act, they will block beta 1 receptor. But still, there is a little bit of blockade on beta 2 receptors sustains. Whereas in case of pindolol, it blocks both beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. So the answer is pindolol. Now, there is an exhaustive list on various types of beta blockers with their activity. Let us see the list. There are numerous questions on beta blockers. So, it is required to understand all these agents. Now, the first one is non-selective beta blockers. Non-selective means they will be blocking both beta 1 as well as beta 2 receptors. In this, you have propranolol, nadolol, pindolol and timolol are there. Now, what is the problem with this? See, blocking beta 1 receptors will reduce heart rate, which can be used to treat certain cardiac diseases. But blocking beta, beta 2 receptor may cause bronchoconstriction, which is not good in case of asthmatic patients. So, when an asthmatic patient is taken beta blocker, these drugs may precipitate bronchoconstrictions. Remember this thing. Now the next one, beta 1 selective agents, esmolol, metoprolol, bisoprolol, etanolol, acibutalol and nevibolol. All these drugs are selective towards beta 1 receptor. Beta 1 receptor means which are present only on heart and they are cardioselective. So these drugs can be used in case of asthmatic patients with less side effects. Now there are some beta blockers which also have local anesthetic activity, which is also known as membrane stabilizing activity. Examples are propranolol, acibutalol, carvidolol. Now the next class is vasodilating beta blockers. Now all these agents, they can release nitric oxide. As you all know, nitric oxide causes vasodilation. So these are the beta blockers with vasodilating properties. Nevibolol, seliprolol, cartolol, betoxolol. Now next one, Intrinsic sympathomimetic agents. See, uh, this sounds a little bit counterintuitive. Beta blockers means they need to block the receptor. In turn, they are acting as antagonist. The moment you say sympathomimetic, it is nothing but agonist. Some of the beta blockers, they have partial agonist activity. But in long run or in higher doses, they will block the receptor. That property is known as intrinsic sympathomimetic activity. Pindolol, acibutalol belongs to this category. Now the last category, alpha 1 as and beta receptor blockers. Alpha 1 receptors are majorly present on blood vessel. Alpha 1 receptor activation causes vasoconstriction. So when you block that receptor, what happens? Vasodilation occurs. In this class, you have labitalol, carvidolol and busindolol are there. Now, these are also vasodilating, these drugs are also vasodilating, but the mechanism is different. These drugs will block alpha-1 receptor, whereas these drugs will increase the release of nitric oxide. Another question on beta blockers is, a cardioselective beta blocker with vasodilating properties is, this is given in GPAD 2008. Pindolol, etanolol, bisoprolol, nebivolol. We have seen this. Nebivolol has got this property. How it acts? It releases nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a vasodilator and it has got beta blocking ability. Now, pindolol 
non selective beta blocker which will block beta 1 as well as beta 2 whereas etanolol bisoprolol they are cardio selective beta blockers so the answer is nebivolol moving to the next one now see this question is given in this year gpat 2020 and also 2015 now the uh, question in uh, 2015 is clopidogrel is a now all these things are mechanism of actions. You need to figure out what is the mechanism of action of clopidogrel. P2 Y12 receptor antagonist. This is the answer. Clopidogrel is an antiplatelet agent. And how it acts? It acts by blocking P2 Y12 receptor, which is known as P2 Y12 receptor antagonist. This receptors are selective for ADP. And these receptors are blocked and platelet inhibition occurs. The next one GP2B3A inhibitor is also an antiplatelet agent. In this class, you have abciximab, aptifibatide, tirofibran drugs are there. We have discussed this in the last video. Now vitamin K antagonists are nothing but coumarin derivatives like warfarin. They act as anticoagulant. So for this, the answer is answer A. In GPA 2020, there is a question about which of the following is antiplatelet agent and one of the choices is clopidogrel. clopidogrel. Now, coming to the next question, look at this one. Co-administration of virapamil and etanolol causes. This one is given in GPA 2008. Now, virapamil is a cardioselective calcium channel blocker. Remember, this is a cardioselective calcium channel blocker. Etanolol is beta-1 selective blocker now what is the problem with this co-administration both of them will reduce heart rate reducing heart rate is nothing but bradycardia along with that because contractions are reducing they will cause a condition called as asystole systole means contraction of heart asystole means without the contraction so the answer is bradycardia and asystole Increased risk of hyperkalemia is there with potassium sparing diuretics like spironolactone. Spironolactone has got this problem. Increased risk of bone marrow suppression. Most of the anti-cancer drugs will show this side effect. Severe CNS depression is there with reserpine. Now in this case, virapamil etanolol co-administration causes bradycardia and asystole. Coming to the next question. Now, a patient taking organic nitrates has to avoid one of the following drugs as it can cause severe hypotension. Now, organic nitrates, how do they act? They release nitric oxide. Release of nitric oxide increases the activity of cy cyclic GMP. Now, cyclic GMP will cause relaxation of muscles. Now, cyclic GMP is also metabolized by fast food diesterase enzyme. Cyclic GMP is, is metabolized by Phosphodiesterase enzyme. Now, this phosphodiesterase enzyme is inhibited by sildenafil citrate. Now, understand the overall concept. Organic nitrates are increasing cyclic GMP because of that relaxation is occurring. Now, cyclic GMP is metabolized by phosphodiesterase. What happens when you inhibit this enzyme? The levels of cyclic GMP further increases and it causes profuse relaxation of blood vessel. That is what causes severe hypotension. So, the answer is sildenafil citrate. Aspirin is an antiplatelet drug. Cholestyramine is lipid lowering drug. Warfarin is anticoagulant. Now, in GPAD 2006, a similar kind of question is given. Organic nitrate interaction with alcohol. What happens with that? Organic nitrates causes vasodilation. Similarly, alcohol also causes vasodilation. So, it results in, again, hypotension. So, both of them are related to organic nitrate question. Next one. See, the structural feature common for propranolol, etanolol, metoprolol in the side chain is all these drugs are beta blockers. Now, these beta blockers have a common SAR point. All of them has got a pharmacophore known as aryl oxy 2 propanol amines. Now, this is an aryl group, this is oxy group, this is 2 propanol, and to that, an amine group is attached to which isopropyl groups are attached. So, in all the drugs, propanolol, etanolol, metoprolol, this is what is the side chain is. Now, see the options. The first one, isopropyl amino propane to all. This is isopropyl group. This is amine. This is to all. So, this is the major ring and this part is side chain. 
So this is the answer. What is the answer? Isopropyl amino, propane, dual. Remaining things, dimethyl amino means in to this uh, amine group, two methyl groups are present, which is not correct. Similarly, diethyl amino, dibutyl amino, all of them are not correct. Now this one is a pharmacophore moiety. All beta blockers are derivatives of aryloxy propanol amines. Now the next question. The drug nifedipine can be synthesized from. Now in order to answer such kind of questions, first we need to know the structure of nifedipine. Then you can guess with the structural motifs what all the molecules are there in the synthesis. Let us see the synthesis of nifedipine. See this is the drug nifedipine. Nifedipine is 1,4-dihydropyridine derivative. This is 1,4-dihydropyridine ring at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 3 and 5 positions there is a methyl ester at 2 and 6 position a methyl group is there. At 4th position you have ortho nitro phenyl group attachment is there. Now it is synthesized by nitrobenzyl head, 2 molecules of methyl ester state and ammonia condensation results in nifedipine. Now let us get back to the options. The first option says ortho nitrobenzyl head, methyl ester state and ammonia. So this is the correct answer. Second answer says it is para nitrobenzyl head. The nitro group is present in ortho position but not in para. In third option it is given as ethyl ester state. If you see the structure it is methyl ester. It is not ethyl ester so this is not correct. In fourth option it is given as methyl amine. It is only ammonia not methyl amine. If methyl amine is taken instead of hydrogen you will have a methyl group. Now think about this one. Even if you don't know the complete synthesis, if you know what is the structure of this particular drug, then you can easily guess what could be the answer is. So my suggestion for all of you is you need to learn the prototype drugs. By knowing the structure you can answer this kind of synthesis questions. Thank you all.